The story of the Norman Conquest is in some respects very simply told. The old King Edward the Confessor dies in January 1066 and there is a succession dispute. You have the King's brother-in-law, Harold Godwinson, claims the throne immediately and is crowned King. But there's another guy, William, Duke of Normandy, the future William the Conqueror, who claims that he was promised the throne by Edward 15 years earlier. But there's a succession dispute and we all know how it ends. Nine months later, Harold and William meet with two armies at Hastings, or battle near Hastings, and William is the victor. But there's a danger, precisely because this is such a familiar story, that we treat it as a given. We treat it as a fact that was bound to happen. When you look in detail at the evidence for the Norman Conquest, the astounding thing is the sheer amount of bravado that it must have taken William to mount the conquest in the first place. And here is a, a leader, a successful leader, but the leader of a northern French dukedom. And he is taking on the might of the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of England, one of the most sophisticated, one of the best run kingdoms in Western Europe. So it's an act of enormous bravado and daring. William has to put together a fleet, buy ships, borrow ships, build ships from scratch. He has to transport horses across 21 miles of water. He has to recruit an army and keep it um, in readiness in northern France for a month before the conquest. And once he gets over, he must beat Harold. He must defeat and kill Harold. For him, it is an absolute go for broke moment. It's all or nothing, which is why Hastings is such a bloody battle and Hastings is such a close-run thing, we mustn't forget. The Normans and the English are pretty evenly matched. The battle goes on from nine in the morning until the sun is going down that day. So it shows what a hard-fought battle it was. Um, and it's probably only the fact that Harold gets killed at the end of it that does for the Anglo-Saxons and means that William can conquer the kingdom. It would have been entirely different had William been killed that day. What ultimately decides uh, the Battle of Hastings is the fact that Harold is killed and William survives. It would have been very different had that been the other way round. Of course, everybody remembers Harold being killed with an arrow in the eye because that's the way he's depicted on the Bayeux tapestry. Or is he? And there's been endless debate about what the tapestry actually shows. I was very keen to believe the eye and the arrow story, but when I examined and unpacked all the evidence in the course of writing the book, I had to come to the conclusion that the jury is still out. We will simply never know how Harold died. The Bayer Tapestry, unfortunately, is a work of art, and it's a work of art that's very heavily influenced by other works of art without giving too much away. So uh, there were certainly a lot of arrows flying around on that day in October 1066, but uh, unfortunately this is one of those things that it will forever remain a mystery. <laughs>